everyone. Today I have with me author, screenwriter, director, producer, actress, everything. Camilla <laughs> <laughs> Outson Ranson. Did I get that right? Yay! <laughs> I know it's a feat. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful. So thank you so much for being here today. I have so much to talk to you about because you have done everything. And I don't think I've talked to anybody yet who has had and worn as many hats as you have. So it's, <laughs> yeah, so it's no, it's really interesting to talk because you know every aspect of movie yes. making and yeah. writing and, you know, and it's, and it's awesome you know, especially yeah. as a woman to be out there doing all these amazing things. And so, but let's start like back, like how it all started, like which one was first, which I, well, I've always written ever since I was, you know, I, I was little, I've always, always written. I've always kept, you know, books and, you know, letters to, well, a lot of dead people. <laughs> and, <laughs> Um, and then I found movies, which sort of was my, my sort of escape. And, um, and I, you know, I was, I grew up in Denmark, I'm Danish born, and I lived in London a couple of times. And um, I moved to London, when I was a teenager to go to an like an acting school, not like an acting school, like a real drama school in London. And mm -hmm. my parents were like, you can go if you get in. Cause they're like, we're going to get in. And, um, I got in and, um, so beautiful. I did that. You are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so are you. Um, <laughs> uh, so I got in and I just, um, I learned how to be dramatic and, uh, yes. You know, that came in very handy when I moved to L.A. Yes. Um, yeah, it was it's really good. And yeah, it's really, people just love it when you're super dramatic and overreact. It's like, that's what they love. Yes. And um, and so I, um, no, I graduated there, and I also had to graduate in, you know, regular subjects like um, <laughs> English literature and, and arts, like uh, history of art. I did a lot of that. I did a lot of very useful things. Um, but I love the arts. I've always been... Just, I, you know what, it's funny because I, I love art and I also love business and people always say they don't go together and I, I don't know why they don't, you know, because right. I just, you know, it's like how we get it out there, the business of getting this out there. And um, I think a lot of artists underestimate that and underestimate themselves. I certainly have, you know, in terms of I only know how to do one thing and, <laughs> you know, and people always say, um, you know, it's sort of like, you know, master of none. And that might be very true, but it works for me, you know, to do all these different things. Yeah, big, well, everybody likes to have that, you know, say that you have that one thing. But I think when it comes to Hollywood, it's it's so much better to not. You know, it's it's so much better to know the whole part of the industry. And, yeah. and uh, lots of actors direct and produce now. And I don't think it used to be as much of a thing as it is now. But right. No, because when I first came out here and I was acting and <clears throat> I, I won my green card in a green card lottery because, you know, it wasn't like I had any special skills and it wasn't like they needed any more blonde actresses. So, you know, when I, when I came out here, the whole thing was like being a model actress. And I actually really think those two don't go together at all, like as much as, oh, really? you know, writer, actor or you know, a business person or model, it, like, I think it's, it's, there are things that go together more, but for some reason they're, you know, because it's about your face. So those two have been sort of slammed together, you know? Um, but I, since I've always been writing, I got into, I started writing very quickly, but it didn't occur to me that you could be a writer. <laughs> Um, I don't, like, you know, I'd always been told like writers were like journalists were writers and that was it. And I don't, I mean, I'm a big reader. I've read my whole entire life and, but, um, but I don't know why I didn't, I didn't think I could be a writer, you know, until yeah, I got something optioned. <laughs> so, yeah. So what was, what was your very first, did you start off writing a script first? Um, I, I've written a bunch of things over the years and, uh, yeah, I wrote a script, um, I sort of outlined it with a friend. We were roommates, uh, you know, and then I wrote the script and it was um, optioned by Stephen Daldry. That was my 
first experience. So I was like, this is how it's always going to be, you know, and that was not not the case. Um, But it was very cool. And he was very nice. And, you know, he gave us the option back when he was doing, you know, the hours right. <laughs> things um you know busy winning oscars uh so but it it really inspired me and it also um you know hollywood is very much about like what are you doing what did you sell what did you option which is you know useful <laughs> because we have to make money but um but i also really just love it and i realized that um you know my uh my my hobby had become my work and my work had become my hobby and Mm. I don't hate it you know like I just I love what I do and I love escaping into it and you know um that's what I do so I just continued because it was really my thing and and being an actor was you know I miss it but just the the thing of getting ready going into an audition I would get so nervous I would get so nervous that you know, and when I got a job, I almost wanted to fire myself off the job because I was so nervous. So writing gave me that thing of like, I could create something and be creative and, you know, and talk to people about it, right. you know, not have to do something else. I, I, you know, I've never done that. So I can't only imagine how nerve wracking going in for an audition, an audition, you know, I can't it's, even imagine that. So it's so fun to create. And I was definitely one of those people who did much better working than auditioning I think auditioning is like can you hear my dogs okay, okay. I will go now they're howling <laughs> <laughs> they don't howl the whole time though they kind of get over it <laughs> they're so annoying they've recently discovered howling and it's so annoying uh, what are they, um, are, they little? What? are they little they're little but they think they're wolves I don't know can I can yeah, I take a ahead. moment okay, okay go ahead I killed them. No, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Oh my god. Well, no, no, that's a glamorous life. <laughs> so you said that um, you were a ghostwriter, like that. Yes. Oh my god, that was one of my first um, jobs. I had. Um, I don't know. I think this uh, person had become aware of my writing through my brother. I'm not, and he was sort of a. Um, he was a sort of radio and TV personality. Um, out of Lebanon, I believe, and he's a psychiatrist, and he was writing a book on, uh, he wanted to write, like, a a book on uh, terrorism and counterintelligence, and um, uh, he, like, had read some of my writing on on a blog that I had, and I'm just, (laughs) I don't know how I got picked to write that, because a lot of the things I do are, like, personal like observing personal things and, you know, like comedic things and silly things that happen. I say silly because just insane, really. Mm -hmm. And um, so I ended up getting this job and uh, I was like, how is it possible that I'm writing this thing? Um, And I tried to also fire myself off that job, but it wasn't that easy. So I ended up writing, which is, is, I I believe, a textbook at this point. (laughs) about terrorism and counterintelligence. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. It is crazy because, but the thing I love about it is that, you know, every time you get a subject that you don't know about, and and it also is that you learn so much, obviously, and also um, you learn about an aspect of yourself that you didn't know. And I, um, you know, it was very much about profiling and the newer, like what the newer types of terrorism is. And it was terrifying. And, but also so interesting because, um, profiling is something that we all do all the time. And I was like, I really think women should be profilers (laughs) because we can literally analyze and tear anything apart, which is kind of an amazing thing. We always get told that we're crazy and stuff, but, but it's actually an amazing thing. And because a woman can basically be like, well, he said hello. And you're like, how, how does it, you know? And so 
it taught me so much about that. Um, it, and it was a great learning lesson and it opened, you know, so many avenues and it also opened a lot of avenues of writing about things that I don't necessarily know about and, um, and doing the research, which I love doing. Mm. So, um, I wrote a script about, um, in the in vitro business and I got to scrub in and see that, you know, done in the, in the lab. And it was, I mean, it was a spiritual experience. It was unbelievable that I didn't, I didn't expect that, you know, and, uh, I wrote a script about adoption with a partner and God, that opened a whole world, you know? And so, um, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that it opens up worlds that, you know, like even if you live in a big city and you see a lot of things, you know, you don't necessarily see, you certainly don't see everything. <laughs> you know, you know so, so don't you think even like with texts, like somebody can say hello when you're like, what's wrong? <laughs> like, yeah. I like, said hello. I'm like, no, you, the way you said hello was just. Really yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I read the other day that anybody who um, adds a period of full stop at the end of a hello, that's actually aggressive. And I do that all the time. And I'm like, I'm an aggressive person <laughs> when it comes to texting, you know? I don't yeah, know. But I can I, definitely, I can definitely pick things apart on texting. It doesn't. So like talking is so much more, you know, I used to say that about my mom, my mom who is no longer with us. She could meet somebody mm -hmm. and be like this, 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 and, this, and walk away and be, and I was like, how do you do that? Like she could read somebody just up and down, you know, in a yeah. short second, you know? I, I think that's, I think there's a, um, like, I do think we have that female intuition. I just think a lot of us override it, you know, like, we don't listen. I mean, that's probably back to the profiling. You start adding things that it couldn't be and you, then you take them away and then you add other, you know? So I think a lot of us override it, but there is something, I think my mom is the same way. She can literally be like, I just don't like that person. And I'm like, please, can you not say it in English? And she's like, <laughs> you just, you know, <laughs> just say it. Can you just say in Danish and leave it? It's yeah, it's a it's a, a little bit of a useful language because it's not that many people speak. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No kidding. I mean, how many people do? I mean, I'm Pennsylvania Dutch. Oh yeah. So, but it's it's not Danish. It's not. You know. Well, it is. It is. It is very close. I mean, it's a very sort of close, you know, proximity area of the world. Of the world, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the thing about ghostwriting, and I've talked to a couple of them, and a couple of people who, who have been ghostwriters, and I thought the one person um, put on Facebook a really cute little like blurb. She said, um, for anybody who wonders what ghostwriters do, look at it this way. No celebrity has ever written their own book. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, really? <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. I, you know, um, cause you're like, wow, there have been a famous actors and actresses and they're even writers. They're so amazing. You know, like that's what people think, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I, I do think that it's, um, I, I can, don't, I mean, it's like finding somebody else's voice. And I think there are people who are incredibly talented at finding, you know, somebody, somebody we really know, and then finding their voice and doing that, I think it's an incredible thing. I mean, I had to do it of something, you know, quote unquote drier, but, um, but I know some incredible ghostwriters and the things that they've written, you would never put those two together. <laughs> you would be like, yeah, that person wrote that person's book. Right. That's and, incredible. And they, you really have to like, your ego has to be so out of it because yeah. you put so much work into a project and you don't get yeah. any credit for it and you'll get paid, but you don't get credit for the writing no. quote unquote. Because, no, you don't get paid. And it's, it's, it is humbling in that way that, you know, but you also have to like, for me, it's always like somebody has the name and the face and you know, then somebody else does the work. It's a, it's a, that is particularly a business, mm -hmm. but it is funny to put together the two people, like this is your voice and this is the person. And often they couldn't be more different, not even the same gender. Yeah, and one guy told me that he did ghostwriting because he would get nervous about his own stuff, but as soon as he got somebody else's stuff, like if they gave him like half a script, he could finish it and hand it back to them. You know, like you said, because it takes the pressure off. Oh my God, what if I don't do this right? What if this word's wrong? What if this gets yeah. rejected? And he said, and then he's successful because there's no like thinking about worrying about, you know, 
am I going to sell it or is it going to be good? Or, you know, he said, for some reason it works that way. So I found that I pretty think that's a really, really good point. point. I hadn't thought of that, but it, that is a really good point because it's the same thing as, as giving, when somebody asks you for advice and you just, you know, and you should, and then if you had to, you can't really do that for yourself. You can talk other people on the ledge, but you're like, I'm on the ledge. And I'm okay, you know? and so I, really I think, think of like, what would I say to my daughters? And then I'm like, Hmm. Well, I would oh my years, God! You know, but then I'm like, yeah. yeah, but that would be not be good advice, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, that's fine. Just yeah, whatever. And then you get it to you, and you're like, mm, I don't know if that's whatever. Like, that's pretty harsh. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, but you, I also read that you did, so you did these like comic books, right? Yes. Okay. So tell me about those. Um, I did, um, that's crazy to me. Especially it is crazy. Running. It is crazy. And I, like, it was literally, you know, when I started doing them, I wasn't, and I have to apologize to the comic book community because it's like the coolest, <laughs> most interested, most down community, you know? And I really didn't know very much about comic books. I didn't even know what movies came from comic books. And, you know, but they're, I mean, comic books, the basics of them, as I understand it, as I interpret it, is that they're very almost like classical plays. You know, they're, I mean, I mean, some people are going to like me for this and some people are really going to kill me for this, but there is an aspect of Shakespeare of that, like, you know, you know, like a classic hero who like things within him bring him brings him down. You know, it's not necessarily an outside thing. And um, so when I came into it, it was simply because I had worked with a um, I worked with a partner, and we'd come up with this story. And actually, it came up because um, she asked me. Uh, we were sitting around like listening to music, and and Prince's controversy came up. And you know, I'm a like I this insane Prince fan, and she's like what does he say? And I'm like, he says controversy. And she, she goes, Oh my God, all this time I thought he said contrapussy. <laughs> and I'm like, huh. okay. And I'm like, that might be the best, 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 best word I've ever heard. And so we, we created this um, comic book around about a controversial cat. And so it, it became this story and it, for, there was really no other medium than that particular medium and we had so much fun with it and you can say a lot more you know politically and everything else when you know absolutely. a cat is <laughs> and that's you true know? you can you absolutely can I bet it was fun too it, like not it was so fun it was so fun and also like none of us um draw you know have any so we had an artist work with us and he was I mean watching him bring it to life mm -hmm. was incredible and when we went out to you know and signed and went to comic book stores and after it was published uh it was published by idw um we like that community and those people are just the coolest people and you know it's um i'm not saying anything about the movie industry but it was really nice to just really connect with people and um it was very it was very humbling actually to not understand a world like this and then just see it like completely open up, you know? Did so you I have a lot of respect for that. Did you guys go to Comic Con? Um, we didn't go to Comic Con, but we went to like every bookstore or yeah. Yeah. Cause we were both acting at the time. So there were auditions. <laughs> yeah. Right. I always yeah. thought it would be fun. You know, I've always seen it on TV, Comic Con. It looks like the most fun place ever to go. You know? Doesn't it look amazing? Yeah. It just looks like these, again, worlds colliding. And I I love that, you know? Yeah. So it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Especially that you got it published and everything. That's very cool. Yeah, it was very cool. And then I did another one um, with that same artist. And it was just from a pilot um, that I had created. And it was just really um it was just really cool to to work with somebody and and see your vision come to life and and also see how how you communicate a character you know and it's different from movies to comic books you know yeah i'm trying to think of what i saw you on youtube i was just watching it today too but i've done so much and i'm like did i write that down but maybe you can tell me i don't know i always forget to google myself <laughs> And last time I did, I somebody had created a like a page just for pictures of my feet, oh. and that's not so long ago. So I was like, 
maybe no more Googling of self. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was like a YouTube, it was like a, um, it was a show that was on oh, YouTube. Oh, Horace, sorry, but it. Well, it was not Horace. I was trying to. Bandwagon? Bandwagon. Bandwagon. That's, That's a great, I mean, I'm very proud of that one. What, is, it, what was that? Explain that to me because it, I only got to It was, it um, it came about just, you know, sitting around with friends at a couple of friends sort of started talking about stuff and, and then, um, I obviously write. And so literally they're improv just saying things. We created a, a complete show and we did it as a movie at first mm -hmm. and then we took a breather and then, um, eventually well, like this is, it was sort of the advent of, of web series and which I love. I, I love all of that because you can do a lot of things that, yes. um, you wouldn't necessarily like in the, like now it's very, it's completely common, but we got to really create this show, um, and get a lot of eyes on it. It was really amazing. And then when we did that, we did, um, we did a second season, which was really fun and bigger and better. And, you know, it was just a, and such an incredible group of, of actors, they you know, were, they were crazy. And I recognize the one woman from, I'm trying to think of the name of that show. She was, she's a black woman and she was, Tracy on a very, yeah, she was on a very popular show on TV. And now I, I think Tracy remember. Thomas was on cold cases. She was also in the original, um, rent, which, you know, it's not her. I know who that is. Yes. Um, is the other one. Yvette. Yes. And she yeah. was on, she was, what show was that? Yvette yeah. She was on a commu um, community. Um, she was on community. Yeah. Community. Yes. Yeah. I love her. She's crazy. She's, She's so talented that. She is. Yeah. I, she was one of my favorite characters on Community. I mean. No, she's, she's unbelievable, that woman. She's unbelievable. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. So lots of Oscars in her future, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> you guys played off each other so well. I thought it was done. Yeah, really, it, was, really it well. was really, it was really just, I mean, it was a lot of, like, I feel like also luck and things coming together and, you know, like a little sort of slice of both time and life, really. Yeah, and, it's, there, it's, yeah. You know? and also we like everybody sort of got into the thing that you can create something and put it together and you know like it definitely I think we created something that we felt very very proud of and when you first got and talk about it it sort of lacks that prestige of like somebody else doing it there's something to that of like oh somebody else is doing a thing but I mean I like the idea of of being able to create something and see it through till the end, you know, and creating characters that can, that can last a little bit. And that, that's the fun part of doing like writing TV or like writing books. Like you can really drag it out. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah, that was fun. Well, tell me about horrors because I can't find that, but I like the um, concept. Yeah. Right? It's, I don't know why. Cause I'm, you know, I'm not the one who does the technical part uh. because well, I did, I found like, I felt like I found one page on it, but then I, I don't know, I wasn't working. There was a, a way to get to some of them, but I wasn't able, I don't know. I, think we, I think we changed platforms and then things went haywire, uh, but I'll, I'll ask people to put it up again. It was actually, that came about because it was, um, I think it was in the summer and I wasn't pitching to TV as much as I would like. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, so I started writing my own thing and it really came from, <laughs> to be quite honest, it came from me having lived in uh, a condo that I bought that had an HOA. And so, um, which I didn't really think about what that was. <laughs> and um, it turns out that the HOA sort of ran the whole thing and I got in hot water with it because I was like, oh, we should just modernize our places and, and they're like that's not in uh I'm, that's in, I'm in one right now i can't even plant so like i want to make a garden and i can't even do that yeah and like it's like you're like i promise my aesthetics are nice and i'm not going to do anything crazy and they were like and i'm like i want to redo the floors and they're like it's not in the manual i'm like <laughs> uh okay and um and so they, I had the manual and it was literally a photocopied book like this thick that I couldn't read because it was photocopied. And I'm like, is it online? Nope, it's online. It's not, that's just not what we do. <laughs> there were so many things in this and 
like I got a guy, I really read the floors in anyway, and I got in so much trouble and I got fined. I was gonna say, then they just fine you. Oh, you know. yes. And then there was a whole thing about like, we need to come in and check your condo every, you know, two minutes. And I was like, look, <clears throat> that's called trespassing. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I kept going, you know, there's a difference between rules and the law. And I tend to abide by the law. Like, arbitrary rules are not my thing, and that became a whole thing, and I got fined and fined and fined. And so, and so many odd things happened, and, you know, people kept getting on the board in order to control something, and so, in the end, I sold it, because also the uh, HOA ended up costing so much, because the treasurer had stolen it. It was like, you know, it was all this stuff, and then um, years later... I created this thing, you know, I just started writing on something called the Homeowners Association of Regency Supreme, which became whores. You know, it's only dirty if you can't spell, you know? So, but um, I love that concept of it. When I first, like, said it out loud, I was like, interesting. Yeah. Homeowners, they kind of are. Like, it kind of, like, was a really <laughs> funny play on words. I like that. Yeah, because it's, and it's also so political, everything that went down there, you know, it's, um, and it's something everybody can can relate to everybody who's lived in in that sort of situation it's just yes. you know you think you have a great your idea is the best you know and so there are a lot of things that but the whole thing was always like it's not in the manual I'm like why don't we have recycling they're like it's not in the manual <laughs> it's the thing that was invented in 1989 not recycling but like anything that didn't come up as a necessity was a necessity and I kept going can we change it and they're like they kept saying it cost five thousand dollars, and uh, you know, I was like, "What does that mean?" And it was about like having to go to a lawyer and change it and all this stuff, and so all of that stuff ended up in in uh, in the show. That's awesome. You know, that is no, it's a great concept, and and if you lived here, um, you know, we have snow removal. We just had a huge blizzard. Okay, but it's like, oh no, you have to put your garbage cans over here when there's snow so that they don't get in the way of the truck when it's here. And it's like, I don't even know where to find that rule, but there's like rule, I'm always like breaking these rules. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, like sometimes I'm like, am I just not paying attention? But, and then again, I'm like, well, the, the law is, you know, and they're like, well, you know, the law, <laughs> I clearly are outside of the law. <laughs> yeah, and my, I don't get plowed because my garbage cans were on the wrong side of the driveway. Like, really? That's the, you know, what do they do? That's, that's those dangerous. Why? That's dangerous. So now you're being punished and it's dangerous, but it doesn't matter because your garbage cans are on, you know, that's the kind of stuff <laughs> that makes me completely insane and then makes me laugh. Right. It's a, and it is. That's how I was. I was like, really? Like, and every other neighbor, though, seems to know. Like, they seem to know. The right. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. I looked around. And I was like, they all know. How do they? How do I not know? And how do they? I mean, I've lived here for a long time. Why? <laughs> yeah, it, that's the thing that I, you know, like, you know, I need an in interpreter for things like that. <laughs> Why is that? Because also I love when things look nice. You know, I also do a lot of design and, mm -hmm. you know, I've built a couple of things recently and I like when things look nice and I like, but, but I don't think, you know, my, like everybody don't, doesn't need to build like I do or create what I do. You know, that's, that's the beauty of it. But, um, I, and I understand like you have something and you want it to look uniform, but. But why do the bushes have to be uniform? That's what why do they have to be, you why know, you and so, my personality of bushes and you get to have your bushes and everybody can look a little bit different than yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just plow the street. <laughs> just, you know, just, and come just, pick up my garbage, just, please. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, and then the fact that you pay for it just made me go. I, know, I, know. <laughs> you know? I think it's great so, that you did a show out of it though. That's what I was like. I just got a real big chuckle out of it. So I'll have to look for it because I know it's a great concept. And yeah, no, it was really, it was really fun. And I got to do it with good friends and, you know, we did, we did it so we could every week we could have a guest star on like, you know, um, a name and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I just asked my friends to come and do a guest star and, you know, like again, you know, actors are so generous, you know, with their time and energy and it was really cool, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. 
So what are you doing now? Like what's your big project? Oh, now I'm in the middle of, um, I got hired to write a period piece, which I've also never done before. And, you know, again, I want to fire myself off the job. Um, you know, I'm not allowed to talk about what it is. Um, but it's something I've never done before. It's a period drama. It's a very interesting uh, woman. It's set in the, it starts in the eight, early 1800s and it goes to about 1870s and what country literally all over country? the world. Sorry? What country? It starts in England, in London, and then it goes to Belgium and it goes to Germany and it, then it goes to Greece and then it goes to Syria. <laughs> and funny. yeah. So it's literally, um, I always say my pitch is for this, Lady Mary of Downton Abbey becomes Khaleesi, you know, of, uh, of Game of Thrones. And it's a true story. So, you know, no dragons, unfortunately. But I, right, when you say England and during that time frame in the 1800s, uh, I think of Queen Victoria. She was, um, wow, well, let's, let's see if I can do history. I believe that she was after was she? She died in nineteen ten. Yeah, she died because she was the she was sort of just before the industrial revolution, I believe, right? Yeah, like she died in nineteen ten. She she was yeah. a queen for yeah like forever. She was she was a little. Um, I believe she was a. This is before, because this starts in the early 1800s, you know. That's crazy. And yeah, and it's an incredibly modern woman who sort of also breaks all the rules, but she doesn't have any, she doesn't have an intention of doing it. It's just the way she lives and the fact that she, it put, it made me think about a lot of things because the fact that she, the way she dared to live, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I wouldn't even dare to live like that now. And, um, and I think I can be very adventurous and, you know, right. fun, <laughs> but, but she, the things that she dared to do is, was amazing. And, and I'm just, I feel so grateful to get to sort um, to, to sort of dive into this, but it has been a big, really big job. And, um, and I'm still like, I'm on the second draft now. And, um, you know, my whole house and office is literally like just littered with paper everywhere and me sort of trying to, because I started in my office and it wasn't enough. And it's sort of <laughs> like a beautiful mind, but without the genius part, let me just, yeah. And uh, so it just, you know, create, but I'm just really, I'm is really it in it, script? you know? Is it going to be a script? So so is it, a Sorry? Movie? is it a movie? It's gonna. It's be a movie. movie. It's a movie. Yeah. You should um because PBS is doing a show right now on Queen Victoria. That's why I know so much about her. I did hear about that, and I've been watching a lot of you know um period like period dramas. So even like even you know I was watching Out of Africa again. Of course, she was Danish, and you know, but it's very much like those women who I don't think they set out to be you know wild and free. It's just they they are, and then they're like, oh my god, I forgot that I. I couldn't do this because of my gender, you know? And so, you know, I love, and I also loved um, The Crown on uh, on Netflix. I thought it was very subtly uh, and very beautifully told, you know? I love those period pieces. And and Queen Victoria, the girl who plays her, which I don't, mm -hmm. I don't even know who she is. She's English, of course. But um, she, like, the beginning credits when they show her face, like, when they place the crown on her, I mean, she's just, she's crazy. And I... I uh, got to interview the woman who wrote the book, and and she <gasps> was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing because I work from a book, and I like that she is. She to be on set, and she knows, you know, she it was it was really crazy. But um, I love period pieces, so I can't wait. Like I, that is like I don't know. I'm a history buff because I read everything. But when mm. and especially like if you can, because I didn't even know. Victoria and then you find out she's queen at 18 and she does all this crazy wonderful stuff a century uh, now two centuries ago you know like it's crazy yeah but yeah so it, I can't wait I really amazing? Hope you keep me in the loop on that because I am I so will interested in yeah that. no I will I, I love it and uh I'm also writing um a couple of you know I'm, I, I'm scheduled to write I got a book deal with a friend so we're doing that and um and I'm also writing a book on my own. And, and um, so, I mean, it's, I'm busy, which I love to be. Yes. <laughs> I really, you know, 
I think work is the most exciting thing to do. Well, and you're in the you're in the best place too. Yeah, I'm really good. Oh, there are my dogs again. <laughs> That's okay. I'll I'll let you know. I have, you know, so many more interviews to do today. But I, if I am so happy that we hooked up in the weirdest, oddest, most <laughs> that we figured this out today. Because I'm so happy that I got to talk to you. It was I know. Awesome. I figured out Skype. Yay! <laughs> and let me tell you, that's not the easiest thing. All day today, I've been having trouble with Skype. So I, oh, really? it, it, you are not the first person that's had trouble. It's not the easiest thing. Sometimes they don't cooperate and you can't find people and it's it's ridiculous. But I'm so happy I found you on LinkedIn and everybody can find you there. And, and I everybody can find you there. there. <laughs> and yeah, and you can keep us up to date because I want to talk again when this like happens and your book comes out or whatever. Yeah. Whatever happens with you, please, we'll do this again and we'll get it Thank out you. there. And you know, and yeah, we'll so stay in touch. And I won't have dogs next time. I'll have <laughs> no, it's no problem. You are so awesome. Thank you so much, Camilla. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay,